Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's session, which is a deep dive into Python GeoPandas built-in dependencies. This webinar is the second in a series of six webinars. The first webinar two weeks ago was an introduction into geospatial analysis with Python for data scientists. And this session today is a deep dive into Python GeoPandas built-in dependencies. The third part in two weeks is going to be on geopan geospatial data visualization in Python. The fourth part will cover geospatial data wrangling in Python. The fifth part is going to be on working with geospatial data at scale, specifically with Amazon AWS. And in the sixth part, we're going to talk about geospatial data analysis in context of machine learning. And this webinar series has a bi-weekly cadence, and we will share all the information on GitLab, YouTube, and Medium. And this webinar series is brought to you by T-Systems. And T-Systems is the enterprise customer unit of Deutsche Telekom. And Deutsche Telekom is one of the largest telecommunication companies globally. And this series is powered by Knut, which is a specialized data science consultancy. So in case you missed the first webinar, you can find it on the YouTube channel of T-Systems International. All right, a quick refresher for all those who were not able to attend the first webinar. Geographic Information System, or in short, GIS. GIS solves real-world problems leveraging on state-of-the-art technology since its very early beginnings 200 years ago. So what you see here is the first heat map ever created. And it essentially correlates the cholera outbreak with water sources. And this heat map was created in 1832 by Charles Piquet. And this observation that cholera is spreading through water instead of air was confirmed during the cholera, out oops, the cholera outbreak in London in 1854 by John Snow. And the technological revolution that propelled the advent of geographic information system is photosyncography, or in short, Zinco. And Zinco essentially enables an accurate reproduction of images, manuscript text, and outline engravings. Now, what are the similarities and what are the differences between cartography and geospatial analysis. The similarity is that both a cartographic document and a geospatial data and information, GIS, contain examples of a base map to which additional data can be added. And the difference is that there's no limit to the amount of additional data that can be added to a GIS map. GIS uses analysis, statistics, and increasingly machine learning to present data in support of particular arguments, which a cartographic map cannot do. It's important to get GIS right. And here's some advice from the father of modern geographic information system, Roger Tomlinson. So in his book, Thinking About GIS, which I highly recommend in case you want to further explore the subject of GIS, he asked the question, what do you want to get out of GIS? How are you going to be better, faster, or cheaper? So the key of it all is knowing what you want to get out of it. So always begin with the end, of, end in mind when you're approaching a GIS project. Okay, so how do you actually work with GIS data? First and foremost, working with GIS, analyzing and visualizing GIS, uh, GIS data is about orchestrating layers of data from different sources. So this might sound a little bit complex and confusing. So let me use an analogy from the real world. So let's assume that you want to analyze and visualize data that is quote unquote stored in someone's brain, right? You can have two different types of data. This can be either abstract data or visual, visual data. And in case of abstract data, you would need a tool such as, for example, a pen, and you would essentially extract the data and project it 
onto a notebook, for example. And in case of visual data, you have different tools that you can use to represent the data on different, well, different frames, if you will, right? So you can have a paint or um, spray, or you can have different colorful pens. And depending on what tool you use, you would need different frames uh, to project the data. And so the same concept applies to programming as well. All right, so now let's look into working with Python and how data is being processed in Python. So in case of a file that holds non-geospatial data, and this can be any file storing tabular data, such as, for example, a CSV, that data is represented as a data series, which is essentially rows and columns of data. And that data series is projected onto a data frame. And a data frame is a tabular data structure with, la which, with labels, axis of rows and columns. Now, by comparison, if you're working with geospatial data, the process looks a little bit different. So in case of a geospatial data, and there's many different file formats. One exemplary file format is shapefile. So this shapefile is represented as a geo data series, which is essentially rows and columns of geospatial data, including the latitude and longitude. And this geo data series is projected onto a geo data frame. And that is essentially a data frame with coordinates stored as two columns or in a WKT format, which stands for well-known text format. The only way to store data in GeoPandas is to create a GeoData frame. Now, once you have a GeoData frame, you need, oops, you need geometry. And what geometry does, it creates a separate column in GeoData frame holding latitude and longitude from geodata series as an object. Now, once you have all those pieces together, you can utilize a Cartesian plane or coordinate system, which is very much a mathematical graph labeled with X and Y axis. Now, let's take a look on how GeoPandas looks under the hood. What are the different libraries and how do they work together? First of all, you need Fiona. Fiona is a library which is built specifically to read and write files containing geospatial data. Once the file is read, it can be represented as an object for further analysis and manipulation in Shapely. Now, bear in mind that Shapely is not for visualization. This is only a library that is only built for analysis and manipulation of planar geometric objects. As far as visualization goes, that's what Matplotlib is for. So Matplotlib is the foundational library for visualization. Now, how do you plot um, a geometric object represented in Shapely? How do you plot it on Matplotlib? For that purpose, you need a library called Descartes. And Descartes essentially glues Matplotlib and Shapely together. So it plots Shapely objects onto Matplotlib. And ultimately, there is Cartopy, and Cartopy is a library designed for geospatial data processing in order to produce maps and other geospatial data analyses. It's built on NumPy, and NumPy is the fundamental library for scientific computing with Python programming language. It has support for large, multi-dimensional arrays and matrices, and a large collection of high-level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. So luckily, when you install GeoPandas, all these dependencies will be automatically also installed. But it's important to understand how those different libraries, how they operate under the hood. All right, let's get practical. So if you want to work with geospatial data in Python, you can use Anaconda, which is a Python data platform which is currently used by approximately 6 million data scientists and analysts. Now, if you want to do geospatial with Python in Anaconda, 
you need to configure Anaconda properly. If you don't do this, you're going to run into trouble and you're not going to be able to utilize GeoPandas properly. That's a problem that we encountered and it took us quite a while to figure out what's going on in Anaconda and how can we fix this. Now, here's what we learned. You essentially have to apply this three-step process. First of all, you have to install the Conda Forge repo. Then as a second step, you need to deinstall the default Anaconda repo. And then in the third step, you have to install GeoPandas and all the dependencies will be automatically installed as you have seen them in the previous slide. All right, so let's jump into the notebook. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the different concepts and terminology and I'm going to show you some samples of code. We will not dive very deeply into the code today. This is going to be subject to the following two sessions. All right, so what is a data structure? A data structure is a data organization, management and storage format that enables efficient access and modification. It is a collection of data values, the relationships amongst them, and the operations that can be applied to the data. And so in Python, you have for different data types, different data structures. Now there are libraries, but not all libraries are created equal. So essentially libraries are created to add more functionality to the programming language and also to make things easier for the person who writes code. This can be a programmer, a software developer, or a data scientist. And a library can also be created to be a glue between two other libraries. Basically, there are two types of libraries, and that's an important distinction. A library and a standard library. A standard library is one which is included with the distribution of the programming language, whereas library provides some additional task-specific functionality. And that's the terminology as it's been used by the open source community. Now, a programming language, in essence, is made up of two things, which is core, it is the language, and the standard libraries. All right, shapefile. Like I said before, shapefile is one popular geospatial file format, and there are many, many, many different uh, geospatial file formats. Uh, to my knowledge, there are approximately 100 different uh, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, in the daily practice, we are using approximately five to 10 different geospatial file formats. Now, data frame is a tabular data structure with labeled axes of rows and columns, originally from Pandas library. And the geodata frame is essentially a data frame with coordinates stored as two columns or in a WKT format, which is a well-known text format. The only way to store data in GeoPandas is to create a geo data frame. And WKT is a markup language, very much like HTML. It's just for geospatial data. And it was created by an open geospatial consortium, OGC. And OGC is an international voluntary consensus standard organization. And around 500 commercial public nonprofit and research organizations worldwide collaborate in a process to encourage, encourage development and implementation of open source standards for geospatial content and services. A geoseries, what is a geoseries? Well, a geodata frame is essentially made of a geoseries. And usually data is made up of numbers, symbols, and letters where geospatial data has shapes associated with it. So for example, like earth or oceans or mountains, the question is how can you put them in a table using letters and numbers? Such data can't be stored like normal rows and column table. So we need to use a proper method for saving geometric shapes. WKT is one such method. And then use some software or library to manipulate and analyze them. And in this case, it's gonna be shapely. And that information is stored and named as geoseries. 
Now, geometry, it's written with a small g. And that is the name of a geo series column in GeoData frame. And it holds the geometry of geospatial data. So whenever we apply a spatial operation on the data stored inside a GeoData frame, this operation always acts on the geometry column. The Cartesian plane coordinate system in visualizations, generally we use the same XY plane as in mathematical graphs. And when you look into the Python code, the order in which um, the coordinates are listed is always X first, Y second. Now, let's talk about the different parts and dependencies of GeoPandas. Now, NumPy is a fundamental library for scientific computing with Python programming language. It has support for large multi-dimensional arrays and matrices and a large collection of high-level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. And all the data structure used by pandas, GeoPandas and many other libraries, make use of basic data structures that come from NumPy. Every, even though it is not included as a standard library for Python, it has been integrated so tightly with Python that it's also known as numerical mathematical extension of Python. Now the core functionality of NumPy is its ND array. And it stands for N dimensional array data structure. Since we are not going to use NumPy data structures directly in geospatial analysis, you're not going to see much code of NumPy. We will be using geospatial libraries, which in turn use NumPy data structures to implement their own. So hence we will learn to use their data structures. Shapely. Shapely is used for manipulation and analysis of planar geometric objects, two-dimensional, and hence Cartesian coordinate system. Shapely is not concerned with geospatial data formats or coordinate systems. It can be used for anything that is planar. So as an example, if you want to plot a point, you would import points from Shapely geometry, and you provide the um, the uh, coordinates, in this case, it's zero. And you can check, is it really a point? So if you, for example, apply pt.area, obviously the result is zero because a point cannot have an area, nor does it have a length. In case you want to represent a shape, for example, like a line, you would need to import line string. And then you can provide the coordinates of the line. In this case, this is 0, 0, and 2, 0, x first, y second. And you may ask, what if you want to represent a very complex shape, like, for example, a country? In this case, you would create a polygon. So you would import from shapely.geometry polygon, and then you can essentially create a collection of coordinates. So in this case, it's a very simple triangle, but in case it's a country or a city or any other geospatial polygon, then obviously the coordinates are gonna be way more complex. Okay, let's take a look into Matplotlib. So if NumPy is the foundational library of data structures for scientific computing in Python, then Matplotlib is the foundational library for visualization. And matplotlib is the nuts and bolts of Python for visualization, and it integrates very well with any library. The pyplot model of matplotlib is what we use for plotting. So in this case, we are going to create a polygon directly in matplotlib with those x and y coordinates. And when you plot it, this is what it looks like. This is just an arbitrary shape. Now, obviously those shapes can be way more complex. You can likewise plot, for example, um, points. So in this case, we are going to create a collection of random numbers. 
And then we're going to plot those random numbers using matplotlib. And this is what, what, what it would look like. You can also obviously create linear plots. So in this case, we are creating uh, a series of numbers between zero and two, and we are creating exactly 100 numbers, which we are going to plot as linear, quadratic, and cubic lines. And this is what it would look like. So these are just a few examples of how we can plot using matplotlib. Now, as you see here, we are using Shapely and matplotlib separately, right? So we have essentially created objects in Shapely, but we haven't glued those Shapely objects with matplotlib. So I'm gonna show you just very briefly how to do this. We're gonna discuss this in the forthcoming session in much more detail. So if you want to glue together um, a shapely object and plot it into matplotlib, you would essentially need to do the following. So you would have to import matplotlib and then from shapely geometry, you would need to import line string and from Descartes, you would need to import the polygon patch. So let's assume that we're having a line. So like this one here. And we want to plot a patch on this line. So this is what it would look like. So we would essentially use the card to glue those two libraries together, the object in Shapely and its plot in matplotlib. All right, and ultimately there is Cartopy. And all the libraries that you saw so far, which is NumPy, Shapely, and matplotlib are general purpose libraries. They can be used by any package, any library for visual various purposes. And some libraries though are designed specifically for geospatial data. And one of them used by GeoPandas is Cartopy. And Cartopy is a Python library designed for geospatial data processing in order to produce maps and other geospatial data analyses. It's built on NumPy. And there are two important concepts, coordinate reference system, in short CRS and projections. CRS is also known as SRS, spatial reference system. So CRS, SRS, is coordinate-based system used to locate geographical entities. A projection means a map projection. A map projection is a systematic transformation of the latitudes and longitudes of locations according to the shape we choose. And so now let's take a very brief look into what type of map representations we can create utilizing Cartopy. So there's, for example, the azimutal equidistant. So this is how it would look like. You can essentially create this plot with just five lines of code, five or six lines of code. Alternatively, you can use Cartopy to create so-called plate carry web map projections. This is how it would look like as an example. And then as another example, you can create rotated pole map projections. So that's what a rotated map projections would look like. And ultimately, a web Mercator projection. All right, so with that, hopefully you have a better understanding how GeoPandas, how the different libraries, dependencies, what they are and how they work under the hood. And the next session is gonna be on visualizing geospatial data using Python GeoPandas. This session is going to be in two weeks on February the 14th at 6 p.m. Central European time. All right, so thank you so much for joining this session. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in two weeks.